Ah, now that's a mighty fine motor mount. But why doesn't mine look like that? So this right here is my Voron V2. This is serial number 26, and it's been through some stuff. It's been every variation of the Voron V2 series. And in preparation of getting it ready for upgrading to Voron Tap, I've had to swap out my gantry because I was running an older style gantry that wasn't compatible with Tap. And as part of that, I decided I wanted to try something new. So instead of using, you know, your, your normal Voron 3D printed parts, I decided to take my little desktop CNC and see if we could machine some parts. So as you can see, we have some carbon fiber AB motor mounts. Why did I do it and how did I do it? We're going to find out on today's video. So first off, no, this isn't something you have to do. Vorons are designed with 3D parts in mind. Everything's designed around 3D printed parts. So the gains that you get from going to machine parts in some cases are negligible to non-existent at all. Some parts though can benefit, potentially motor mounts, because you can build motor mounts out of stuff more rigid than printed plastic, and more rigid motor mounts can lead to better performance. So we're gonna do the A and B motor mounts on the V2 gantry. I feel that these parts Parts are simple enough to redesign that pretty much anyone with a simple at home desktop CNC and some carbon fiber plates and the right cutter can follow along with this and do it yourself. And we are going to be redesigning these parts partially to make them more optimized for subtractive manufacturing. So what do I mean by that? Well, additive manufacturing, if you're familiar with 3D printing, you're taking your filament and you're adding until you get to the final desired result. Now, there's minimal waste when you do this, unless you're doing something like supports or purging between different types of filament. If you're printing one single spool of filament for the part, there's very little to no waste. It, it's, it's a great process. However, you are limited to your material choices and that's material that can be melted. Now, with subtractive manufacturing, you're taking your desired material and you're removing stock until you get your final result. So you can use much harder materials. I'm gonna be using three millimeter carbon fiber for this. And when it comes to the design of your part, you need to remember you're removing material. So anything you're removing from your stock is potentially waste and going in the bin. So when we take a look at our Voron AB motor mounts, uh, to keep things simplified, I'm going to be essentially machining just one motor mount, the B motor mount, and mirroring it. So you can see we have an upper and a lower part. So let's just go ahead and isolate this lower part here so I can show you what we're talking about. So if we were to machine this part as it is right now using subtractive manufacturing, we would need stock material that is as thick as it is at its thickest point, as wide as it is at its widest point, and as long as it is at its widest point. And that involves a lot of waste. Basically everything in this middle section is gonna be turned to chips. You have these big cutouts here of stock that's gonna be machined, removed, thrown in the garbage, maybe recycled depending on the material. But essentially you're involving a lot of wastage if you wanted to machine this one to one. This leads to increased time, increased cost from material wear, man hours, machine time, etc. So we wanna simplify this as much as possible. So how are we gonna do that? So let's simplify this entire motor mount assembly into three things, a top plate, bottom plate, and spacers. Top and bottom plate are easy. We're going to machine them out of flat stock carbon fiber. The spacers are easy. Uh, the stack height here is 20 millimeters. So we need some 20 millimeter spacers right here for these M3 screws. And on the back, if you look at the bearing stacks, one of them doesn't need anything. And the second one here, this is a 10 millimeter spacer we would need. And if you do some quick searching on AliExpress, well, guess what? You can find 50 packs of M3 by 20 millimeter spacers and M5 ID 10 millimeter spacers for a dollar each. So the spacers are an off the shelf item. We don't really have to worry about them. Sure, we could 3D print them if we wanted to, but we're trying to avoid that. Now, when it comes to the plates here, there is some things we are going to have to change up. So for example, the thickness of this plate is five millimeters. We're gonna be using three millimeter carbon fiber simply for cost savings. So we're gonna to have to change a few things up. Uh, namely, if you look at these M3 screws, they're countersunk. We're not gonna be doing any countersinking on this plate. These screws are just gonna be flush mount sitting on the top. We do have these cutouts here for grabbing our belt. Now this means that when we go to do machining, we're gonna to have to do two operations and I'll talk about that later, but we can machine these in. However, 
To make the process of machining everything simple, we're just gonna be machining in one operation. We're just gonna mount the plate to the bed and machine, which means we aren't able to flip this over. So we have two options. We can either keep these belt grippers or we could have these locating bosses here for the extrusions. Now, one of these is gonna be a lot more simple. This one, the diameter means we're gonna to have to use a small cutter. I'm gonna be using a one millimeter cutter, but that's it. We just machine these slots and we're done. If we wanted to include these bosses here for locating these assemblies on the extrusions, we're gonna to have to remove stock from the entire plate so that we have this one feature here. So we're gonna be passing on these locating features. We're gonna rely on the gantry itself. We're gonna to have to square it up manually and we're just gonna rely on the screw pressure to keep everything squared up. It should work in theory. We shouldn't have too many issues, but this is one of the things we're gonna lose by going to machined parts. And that's about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate some DXF files uh, from the sketches for the top and bottom plates here. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up the cam software I'm gonna use and we're gonna set up for machining these. So the CAM software I'm using is Carbide Create. I am not well versed in CAM yet, I'm still learning. And for the operations we're doing, simple 2D machining, Carbide Create works quite well for this. So I have our DXF files. Again, we are essentially doubling up the B motor mount and I mirrored it, so we're doing two of them. I'm not worrying about the drag chain mounting. We're gonna be mounting it directly to the extrusion. Now, when it comes to machining this, there's gonna be essentially three operations. The first one involves a one millimeter cutter and these are gonna to be to machine all these sections for the belt grippers. Uh, this is a 1.2 millimeter diameter feature, so we're gonna use a one millimeter cutter to machine that out to a one millimeter depth. After that's done, I'm gonna to have to swap over to a two millimeter cutter, and we're gonna to have to machine the rest of it, and that's two operations. One operation that's gonna cut out all these internal features, and then one final operation that's gonna cut out our parts themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead, create the tool pass for this and then we'll come back. So here are all our tool paths. We have four tool paths here that I'll run at once and this will be to machine all these features. We have our tool pass here with a two millimeter cutter for moving all the interior stock. And then lastly, the tool path here to remove the parts themselves from the plate. And creating tool paths in Carbide Create is actually quite simple. You just select the feature, you can either drag and drop or you can just shift click and select as many as you want. I'm um, using contour and when you create the contour, you can choose either create it inside the line, outside the line or on the line. And for this type of machining, it, it works quite well. You tell it how deep you wanna go, the speeds of feeds, and you go. And then, so I've created all my tool paths here, and I'm gonna to have to save this as two separate G-code files, and what you can do is you can just disable or enable uh, the tool paths you want per G-code when you save it. And then we're gonna export it. I'm gonna do, have to do a few post-processing things to the G-code to make it compatible with my CNC, which is running RepRap firmware. And then we're gonna go out to the garage and start machining. Okay, uh, so we're out here in my garage. Um, it's cold, I live in Canada, there's no insulation, the lighting sucks, but it is what it is. So we've got the carbon fiber plate. It's double-sided taped to the uh, CNC here. We do have a spoil board underneath, so what we're essentially doing is we're cutting through the plate into the spoil board. Eventually you just refinish the spoil board or replace it once it gets so cut up. And uh, we've got the one millimeter cutter installed and we're going to get to CNC now. So again, there's two operations. I've already got my work offset set to the lower left-hand corner here of the uh, carbon fiber sheet. So we're gonna run the one millimeter operation. And then once that's done, I'm gonna swap to a two millimeter cutter. I'm gonna rehaul the machine to the exact same spot. And then we are going to run the two mil operation. Everything should line up properly. Now, when it comes to cutting carbon fiber, it's nasty stuff. So there are a lot of safety precautions you could take to protect yourself. The more the merrier. Um, right now I'm in my garage. Once I start cutting, I'm gonna have the doors open. I've got a shop back here. There are systems for filtering carbon fiber. You should be doing the best you can. I'm using what I have on hand. I'm also gonna be using a mask, an actual respirator mask I'll be wearing the whole time this is cutting. Uh, I've done this in the past. It works pretty good. You can use water uh, to cut down on the dust generation because the dust from carbon fiber is really bad. Unfortunately, it's sub-zero. So water doesn't really work. I'm, I'm cutting carbon fiber, not ice. So I'm gonna take every precaution I can to be safe. 
you plan on doing this yourself, read up on it, take every precaution you need to do to keep yourself safe. So let's get to cutting. So this CNC is a Congro Robo CNC that's been modified with Duet 2, RepRap firmware, a new spindle, and Z-axis. And we did this on a live stream, actually. And if you want to see a dedicated video about this CNC, let me know in the comments below. Not quite sure what happened here. It decided to travel without doing a retract, broke the cutter, a little bit of damage. So I've gone, I've re-sliced some G-code uh, just to continue on basically where we left off. And uh, new cutter installed, let's get back to work. So our plates are now machined. Um, unfortunately, we do have a little bit of damage on the one, but it gives it some character. I've gone ahead, I've sanded the edges just to clean off any burrs. Everything's nice and smooth. We've got our plates, we've got our washers, we got bearings, spacers, screws. Time to put it all together. So I'm gonna try and do that thing that YouTubers do and just kinda... Would you look at that? It actually worked. So uh, putting this together is quite simple. It's pretty much nearly the exact same as assembling the standard printer one. Uh, a few small differences. For the M3 screw, uh, same length screw, but I did have to put washers there just to give them a little bit of space so we didn't bottom out in the stepper. We have our 20 millimeter spacers here. And then for the bearing stacks, now these M5 bolts they normally screw into the bottom part of the printed assembly. Obviously this is carbon fiber. So when I machined these two holes on the bottom, um, I machined them nearly size for size. So the screw is biting into it a little bit, cutting some thread. On this one, I was able to use a longer screw and just put a nut on there with some Loctite. So this one ain't going anywhere, but I didn't have the ability to do it here uh, simply because the uh, stepper motor is there. So luckily the orientation's like this. So gravity is gonna be pulling the screw down and there's gonna be pressure on it from the belt going that way. So I'm hoping on paper, this shouldn't walk out. We shouldn't have any issues. Uh, for these M5 bolts to attach it to the extrusion, I'll just use some washers to space it out. And then for the belt keepers here, um, I've taken the standard design and I've just made it two millimeters taller to compensate for the loss of two millimeters from the three millimeter carbon fiber plate that's everything's made out of. Um, really, that's about it. So let's go ahead and install it in the machine. And guess what? I got a live stream coming up in a couple minutes. So let's install this live on the stream and hopefully everything goes well. So there we go, we have everything installed now. We did it on the live stream. And as you can see, the machine's not fully set up yet. We don't have a tool head. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and ring that bell so you don't miss out when we go and install Voron Tap in this and get everything fully operational. But everything seems to be okay. The mounts are nice and stiff. Everything lines up with the belt pathing, bear and spin freely. I don't see any issues with the changes that I've made to the design to make it compatible for this kind of setup. Now, one thing I am gonna have to keep in mind is, again, this is carbon fiber it's resin impregnated if you run your machines really hot or you run your motors hot you may run into issues with that there are other material options uh, delrin aluminum some are harder to machine some are easier to machine i went with carbon fiber because of cost sourceability and it's carbon fiber it's it's cool it gets plus 10 points in the machine look anyways so it's worth it right but at the end of the day this is more so a test of my abilities and just a fun little project to do if it works it works if it doesn't well stay tuned for an update video so this isn't the first time i've worked with carbon fiber in fact i machined the frame for this quadcopter here that fits in the palm of my hand as a test and if you want to check out the video for that it's linked right over here. I hope you learned something new today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, take care. Cheers.